Hello and welcome to day one of the 2020 Planning Awards Digital Ceremony. I'm Richard Garlick, Editor of Planning and Chair of the Judges. It's great that despite the unusual circumstances created by the pandemic, we were able to come together online and celebrate the fantastic work of our finalists. We were able to do that because of the efforts of our 27 expert judges, who I thank for ensuring that this year the entries was subjected to as much rigorous scrutiny as ever. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, Pegasus Group, for their support. The finalists you're going to hear about have been through a testing and competitive process. In the first round, hundreds of entries were whittled down to a long list by aggregating the scores of judges marking individually. In the second round, those judges came together to debate entries in discussion groups to whittle down the long list to produce winners and high commendations. Above all, we were asking our judges to look for entries that had delivered or promised to deliver genuine positive change. I'm delighted to be able to say that they found many such entries and you're going to hear about them shortly. I'll pass over to my colleagues to tell you more. So now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Planning Awards 2020 Digital Ceremony. First, here's a word from sponsor Pegasus Group. Pegasus Group is delighted to sponsor and be part of the prestigious Planning Awards, the first time taking place virtually. Pegasus, we are proud to be part of an industry that is so important to the future prosperity and health and well-being of our communities. We are involved in development from inception to its delivery, and it's heartening to see a wide range of excellent projects and teams in contention for this year's awards. Despite everything that's currently happening, we're thankful that we're still able to celebrate the Planning Awards with everyone. We wish the best of luck to all who are shortlisted and extend our best wishes to you all. Now to set the scene before the first of our awards, a word from the hard-working judging panel who chose this year's winners. On the judging panel this year, we saw a range of entries that demonstrated how community engagement can enhance their schemes, connecting developments to the environment, providing high quality design and high quality open space. The key theme for me from a commercial point of view was being cost effective without compromising on quality. I can understand it's quite difficult sometimes for developers to balance both originality but being viable. So well done for being creative yet honest. So one of the key themes for me this year in terms of the quality of the entries, as well as the debate amongst judges, was the desire and need to meet the requirements of future generations in terms of the scheme adaptability, resilience, and also viability. I think for me, the ones that won through involved combining traditional architecture with modern buildings and modern approaches, but also, most importantly, meaningful community engagement so you could tell that the impact was going to be positive and long-lasting. And just before we learn the first of those judges' decisions, please don't forget to spread the word about today's proceedings using the hashtag Planning Awards, or you can tag us at Planning underscore Awards. And we start with the placemaking categories, and the first of those is for mixed-use development, where the finalists are Merchant Square Estate, Paddington, London, submitted by Merchant Square Estate. Moat Lane Regeneration Project, Toaster, by South Northamptonshire Council. Moorland Gardens, Brent, by Brent Council. Pilgrim Place, Newcastle, by Avison Young. And Wembley Park Master Plan, Eastern Lands, by Quintain. And from those, ladies and gentlemen, there's a high commendation for Merchant Square Estate. Congratulations. But the judge's winner for mixed-use development is Moorland Gardens by Brent Council. This redevelopment of an adult educational facility includes a new education centre, 65 affordable homes and workspaces for local startups, a cafe and a community garden. The judges praised the use of the local steering group, ensuring the building reflects local needs and aspirations. Let's hear from our winner. 
Hi everybody, just so pleased to get this award for the Moorlands Mixed Use Redevelopment. Um, it's a really exciting project to work on, council-led and definitely working in the interests of the residents and student learners who currently attend the adult education facility there. It's going to be a fantastic development. I'm looking forward to start on site soon, hopefully. Thank you. Mixed Use Development winner, Moorland Gardens, submitted by Brent Council. Next, two awards for the best housing schemes, starting with schemes with fewer than 500 homes. And there are six finalists. Frankham Muse, Haringey, London, submitted by Kostorfin and Wright Architects and Collective Planning on behalf of Frankham Muse Development. Hayfield Green, the redevelopment of the former REF Stanton Harcourt, Oxfordshire, by Hayfield. Manamede Housing Development, Plymouth, by Pillarland Securities Rent Plus. The Old Mansion House site, North Stone and Park Eastley, by HGP Architects. Rathgill Bangor, County Down, by Radius Housing. And Victory Plaza, Stratford, London, by Liftshuts Davidson Sanderlands. And from those, the judges first awarded a high commendation to Manamede Housing Development. Congratulations. But the winner is Frankham Muse, submitted by Kostorfin and Wright Architects and Collective Planning on behalf of Frankham Muse Development. This project has regenerated a former warehouse site in Wood Green, North London, to create a new muse of 29 houses and flats. The judges praised the well thought out, design led approach with strong principles of good placemaking at its heart. Winner for best housing scheme with fewer than 500 homes, Frankham Muse, Kostorfin and Wright Architects and Collective Planning on behalf of Frankham Muse Development. Our next award is for housing schemes with 500 or more homes and four fine schemes made the shortlist. Fulham Gasworks, submitted by the London Borough of Hammersmith and Fulham, St William and Apt Architects. Highwood Horsham by Barclay Homes. Prince Philip Barracks by Whitehill and Borden Regeneration Company and Taylor Wimpy. And Southernwood, Old Kent Road, London by Pilbro and Partners. And taking a judge's high commendation here, it's Fulham Gasworks. But the winner is Prince Philip Barracks, submitted by Whitehill and Borden Regeneration Company and Taylor Wimpy. The former Prince Philip Barracks in Whitehill and Borden is being transformed into a 2,400 home community with schools, jobs and a leisure centre. The judges said they were impressed with the level of community involvement in the scheme. I want my Gwyneth Paltrow moment. It's going to take a little bit longer for me to thank and explain to all of you why I am so delighted. Please come down and visit us at our new facilities in the park. You can be the judge as to whether the scheme is as good as we hope you would think it will be. COVID-19 makes these presentations really interesting. It means they can filmed at home, filmed late at night. Um, and as they say, I'm off to bed. Thanks very much. Winner then for best housing scheme of 500 or more homes, Prince Philip Barracks, submitted by Whitehill and Borden Regeneration Company and Taylor Wimpy. Next, the best use of arts, culture or sport in placemaking, with five strong contenders for the trophy. Broadacres Southwater, submitted by Barclay Homes. Chatham Placemaking Project by Francis Knight. EMD Walthamstow, London by Pilbro and Partners. Illuminated River, Central London by Lifshutz Davidson Sandilands and Illuminated River Foundation. And Wembley Park by Quintain. And from those, there's a high commendation for Chatham Placemaking Project. Congratulations. But the winner, and taking the trophy, is Illuminated River, Central London, submitted by Lifshutz Davidson Sandilands and the Illuminated River Foundation. Supported by the Mayor of London, this project involves 14 Central London bridges being illuminated at night, aiming to make these areas more communal, inclusive and safe. The judges praised it, saying it's adding to London's rich culture of innovation and the arts. Hi, my name's Chris Waite from Lifshutz Davidson Sandilands Architects. We're delighted to have won the 2020 Planning of the Year Award for Illuminated River. We work with a great team uh, on the project, including the artist Leo Villarreal um, and, of course, the 
brilliant client uh, Illuminated Real Foundation. So on behalf of all of us, thank you very much and we hope you get to enjoy the artwork. Winning for best use of arts, cultural, sport in placemaking, Illuminated River, Central London, submitted by Lifshutz Davidson Sanderlands and Illuminated River Foundation. Next, it's best use of heritage in placemaking in the spotlight and six strong finalists. Alconbury Weald, key phase one, including the Watchtower refurbishment, Huntingdonshire, submitted by Urban and Civic. Hayfield Green, the redevelopment of former REF Stanton Harcourt, Oxfordshire, by Hayfield. Plumstead Library and Sports Centre, London, by BPTW. Reading Abbey Quarter, by Reading Borough Council. Royal Arsenal Riverside, Woolwich, London, by Barclay Holmes. And Walthamstow EMD Cinema, London, by Pilbro and Partners. And this time, it's a high commendation for Royal Arsenal Riverside. Well done. But the winner for best use of heritage in placemaking, Reading Abbey Quarter, submitted by Reading Borough Council. By transforming 13 hectares of central Reading, the Grade 1 listed Abbey ruins and gateway have been conserved and reopened alongside a new gallery. The judges were impressed with the community participation in consultations to ensure the involvement of a broad spectrum of people. Winning for heritage in placemaking then, Reading Abbey Quarter, submitted by Reading Borough Council. Best use of brownfield land in placemaking now, where the six in contention are Black's Gate, former Vistian site, Belfast, submitted by Radius Housing. Hayfield Green, the redevelopment of former REF Stanton Harcourt, Oxfordshire, by Hayfield. Mayfield Partnership, Manchester, by You and I. Mulberry Place, Daventry, Northamptonshire, by Marcini Curran Planning for Daventry District Council, Wilmot Dixon Construction and Marcini Curran Associates. Scottish Marine Technology Park, Old Kilpatrick, West Dunbartonshire, by Stantec. And Stonefield Edge, Bilston Urban Village, Wolverhampton, by Countryside Partnerships, West Midlands. And here there's a high commendation for Scottish Marine Technology Park. Well done to you. But the winner for best use of brownfield land in placemaking is Mayfield Partnership, Manchester, submitted by you and I. This 26-acre district has been derelict, but with planning consent to turn it into a mixed-use neighbourhood with 1,500 homes and office, retail, leisure and hotel space, the judges describe this as a hugely transformational project with communities at its heart. Winner for best use of brownfield land in placemaking Mayfield Partnership, Manchester, submitted by you and I. Next in the spotlight, best use of publicly owned land or property in placemaking, with a winner chosen from this shortlist. Beam Park, Dagenham, London, submitted by Patel Taylor. The Glassworks, Barnsley, South Yorkshire, by Barnsley Metropolitan Council. Crate, St James Street, Walthamstow, London, by the London Borough of Waltham Forest and Crate Places UK. Mulberry Place, Daventry, Northamptonshire by Marcini Curran Planning for Daventry District Council, Wilmot Dixon Construction and Marcini Curran Associates. Stonefield Edge, Bilston Urban Village, Wolverhampton by Countryside Partnerships, West Midlands. And Wokingham Town Centre Regeneration, Berkshire by Wokingham Borough Council. And first this time it's a high commendation for the Glassworks. But the trophy goes to Beam Park, submitted by Patel Taylor. Beam Park is planned to provide 3,000 homes on the formerly derelict Dagenham Ford site, which stretches across two London boroughs, Barking and Dagenham and Havering. The judges praised the scheme's potential social, economic and environmental benefits for the area. I'd like to thank you for this award on behalf of Patel Taylor, current site in LNQ. The success of Beam Park is due to collaboration between the design team Greater London Authority, public and private sets bodies to provide high quality housing and to create a new place and community. The scheme delivers 3,000 new homes and extensive infrastructure, including schools, new station, health facilities, and public park that will serve the new community and the wider area. Best use of publicly owned land or property winner, Beam Park, Dagenham, London, submitted by Patel Taylor. And so we come now to the Placemaking Award for Design Excellence, where the sixth contenders are 
Estate Management Scheme Design Guide, submitted by Place Services. The H.B. Allen Centre, Oxford, by MICA Architects. The LSE's Centre Buildings Redevelopment, Hoban, London, by Rogers, Sturk, Harbour & Partners and Turley. Keyside Quarter, former Honey Monster factory site, Southall, by Knight Frank, on behalf of Galliard Homes. Sky House New Build and Conversion, Utibridge Mill, Sheffield, by Coda Planning. And South Mead Hospital Redevelopment Project, Bristol, by BDP. And once again, there's a high commendation to announce, and that's for the HB Allen Centre. But the winner is South Mead Hospital Redevelopment Project, Bristol, submitted by BDP. North Bristol NHS Trust's new 800-bed Brunel building is designed to support the efficient and sustainable delivery of healthcare and aims to increase patient and staff well-being. The judges praised the design's fantastic approach to health and well-being. We're so excited to have won the Design Excellence category and the Planning Awards. Our project was a true collaboration between ourselves at North Bristol Trust, BDP Architects, Carillion the Construction Company and Bristol City Council. Thank you so much. Design Excellence winner, South Mead Hospital Redevelopment Project, submitted by BDP. Our next award is for community-led placemaking, and this time two compelling finalists go head-to-head -head for the trophy. South Mead Regeneration, working for the Community Project, Bristol, submitted by Nash Partnership and Streets Reimagined, and Team Catford, Lewisham, London. So here, one finalist takes a high commendation and the other takes that winner's trophy. So we'll reveal the winner first, and taking the award for community-led placemaking it's Team Catford. Team Catford aims to help people influence local planning decisions, seeks to find out what the community wants and puts recommendations to Lewisham Council. The judges said the programme went above and beyond to secure buy-in from all sectors of the community. Thank you. This is such an exciting achievement for Team Catford. As the local councillor, I'm absolutely delighted that we've won this award that has the community at its very heart. We're here outside what will be House of Catford. We'll be opening at the end of September and it will be a retail space. Also, it'll be a space to come and chat and hear more about the regeneration of Catford Town Centre. Winning then for community-led placemaking, Team Catford, Lewisham, London. And of course, congratulations to the high commendation there, South Mead Regeneration, working for the Community Project. Next, it's time to reveal the finalists for the Partnership Working Award. And they are A38 Manadon Junction, Plymouth, submitted by Highways England and Plymouth City Council. Collective Auction Rooms, Camden, London by Camden Town Unlimited. Design Support for Runnymede Borough Council, Runnymede Design Guide, Surrey by Tibbles Planning and Urban Design, Design Southeast, Purcell and Runnymede Borough Council. Greater Norwich Joint Infrastructure Investment Plan and the Supporting Infrastructure Investment Fund by Greater Norwich Growth Board. Holton Link Road Education and Community Partnerships, Rugby Warwickshire by Urban and Civic. And Wild West End, Central London by Arab. And from those, there are two high commendations. One for Collective Auction Rooms by Camden Town Unlimited and the other for Wild West End by Arab. Congratulations to you both. But the winner, and taking the trophy for partnership working, it's Greater Norwich Joint Infrastructure Investment Plan and the Supporting Infrastructure Investment Fund, submitted by Greater Norwich Growth Board. This plan provides a framework for investment in transport, community, education and green infrastructure. Since 2014, more than £18 million has been committed to over 70 projects, and the judges praised this as a good example of collaboration at all levels. Winning then for partnership working, Greater Norwich Joint Infrastructure Investment Plan and the Supporting Infrastructure Investment Fund, submitted by Greater Norwich Growth Board. We come now to a new award this year, presented for Fostering a Healthy High Street, and there are six contenders for this trophy. Catford Muse, London, submitted by Really Local Group. The Guildhall Quarter, Canterbury, by Clegg Architects. Harleston Placemaking Framework, Brent, by Brent Council, Hawkins Brown and Jan Katine Architects. 
Salisbury Central Area Framework by Tibbles Planning and Urban Design and Wiltshire Council. Wakefield Future High Streets Fund September 2019 to March 2020. West Yorkshire by Arcadis and Wakefield Metropolitan District Council. And Walthamstow High Street Initiatives by London Borough of Waltham Forest. And this time there's a high commendation for Walthamstow High Street Initiatives. But our first ever winner of the award for fostering a healthy high street is Catford Muse, submitted by Really Local Group. Catford Muse is a 1300 square metre multifunctional community space on the high street. The judges said that the mix of uses will ensure vibrancy at all times of the day and that the scheme demonstrated a bottom-up approach. We're thrilled to be recognised for our efforts in putting the heart back into the high street by creating cultural infrastructure such as Catford Muse in Lewisham that celebrates true localism. We believe our unique approach will mark a new wave of regeneration through high streets across the UK. Thank you. Winning then for fostering a healthy high street, Catford Muse London, submitted by Really Local Group. Our penultimate award today is the Placemaking Award for Promoting Economic Growth and there are five contenders. Ambitions for the North, a spatial framework for people and places in the north of England, submitted by Stantec. Camden Collective, London by Camden Town Unlimited. Heart of London Place Shaping Strategy, Central London by Public Air. Inclusive Growth Strategy 2019 to 2040 by Brent Council. And Wokingham Town Centre Regeneration, Berkshire by Wokingham Borough Council. And this time there's an outright winner, and that goes to Ambitions for the North, submitted by Stantec. This non-statutory spatial framework for the North of England aims to promote a sustainable and inclusive approach to growth. The judges said it may prove to be a model for other regions to follow in their approach to long-term sustainable growth. Ambitions for the North addresses a range of complex topics that are now echoed in the government's planning white paper, such as planning sustainably for housing and economic growth, and levelling up the North. On behalf of the Stantec team, I'd like to say we're delighted to receive this award. The winner for promoting economic growth, Ambitions for the North, a spatial framework for people and places in the North of England, submitted by Stantec. We come now to our final award for today, for regeneration. So which of these six finalists takes the planning trophy? Will it be New Islington, Manchester, submitted by Urban Splash? The Northern Gateway Strategic Regeneration Framework, Manchester, by Avison Young? Pidar Regeneration, Truro, Cornwall, by Inner Circle Consulting, in partnership with PRP? Regeneration of Hilltop Neighbourhood Centre, Highview, Hatfield, Hertfordshire, by Lovell Partnerships and Wellin Hatfield Borough Council? Stonefield Edge, Bilston Urban Village, Wolverhampton by Countryside Partnerships, West Midlands. Or will it be Winstanley Estates Regeneration, Phase 1 Hybrid Planning Application and Master Plan, Wandsworth, London by Taylor Wimpy. Six strong contenders there for the Regeneration Award and from those there is a high commendation and that goes to Pidar Regeneration. But the winner taking the award for Regeneration it's New Islington, submitted by Urban Splash. By transforming Manchester's Cardroom Estate into New Islington, an inner city village, featuring townhouses aimed at families and social housing, alongside independent businesses, eateries, green spaces and a marina, the entrants have created a strong sense of community, said the judges. The planning award for regeneration goes to New Islington, submitted by Urban Splash. Well, that's it for today's instalment of the Planning Awards. Huge congratulations to all the finalists and, of course, to our winners and to our sponsor, Pegasus Group. Please keep your celebrations going, if you would, and send your congratulations to all of today's winners. Twitter details will be on screen shortly. And finally, there are full details and much more about all of today's winners at planningresource.co.uk. We'll be back tomorrow, right here online, to reveal the remainder of this year's planning award winners. Meantime, thanks for joining us today. We hope to see you tomorrow. <laughs>